BD5 pilot with you out of the Hillsborough hangar on the uh, first Saturday in February. And uh, Portland is bracing for some potential snow. We might even get a whole inch of snow. Uh, so I did put the snow tires on my car. That probably guarantees we will not get snow. Let me show you what I've been working on. A few episodes ago, I was talking about uh, how I was uh, working on designing the uh, fuel system. And basically, I'll have the fuel coming up from the wings inside of the main gear box there. They're going to be on the inside until they get up to this area here. And these will actually be angled at about a 45. And that's where these push-pull cables come in. These end up being my fuel valves. So they're either closed or open merely by pushing and pulling on those uh, cables up on the instrument panel so I can independently control right and left fuel tank. Those will then feed into a gas escalator, which is mounted right there. And, uh, and then that way I'll have the uh, ability to uh, drain fuel from the bottom of the uh, fuselage and uh, make sure I don't have any uh, water getting into the fuel system. And then coming up from there, That'll actually feed into uh, feed into that electric fuel pump, so that if I do need additional uh, pr fuel pressure, if my uh, pumps fail on the uh, carburetors on the engines, I can uh, have that as a, as a backup. And I've also you notice if you look way down here, I've actually uh, just temporarily set what's going to be the uh, fresh air intake for the uh, carburetors. That'll be a NACA duct, so I'm going to not have a scoop on the outside of the aircraft. A high pressure area, though, on the underside of the fuselage, so that will uh, help feed cool air and uh, hopefully a little bit of a uh, slight bit of forced air into the uh, carburetors to uh, help with the uh, horsepower when I'm at altitude. We're going to talk about some other changes when I get to the instrument panel. I told you in the last video, I'm pretty happy with the uh, way this panel layout is working out. Love having the switches here. They're the fact that they're illuminated and uh, a good quality switch that are going to tie into that vertical power system. So one of the things that I've uh, actually changed in ideas, I've had so much trouble getting a 12 volt alternator system uh, designed for that uh, engine. And there's an existing uh, 20, 24, basically it's a 28 volt alternator that feeds a 24 volt system. And uh, so I got to thinking, let's let's add up what I've got in the aircraft that had originally been designed for 12 volt. What do what I need to change to convert it over to a, uh, a 24 volt system? Turns out all of these Garmin avionics are designed to be 12 or 14 or 12 or 24 volt. So this this all works, all the remote stuff in the back works. I don't have to change any of the any of that out. The uh, switches, the LEDs that illuminate those switches do have to have a 12 volt uh, power supply. And uh, that's a pretty easy thing to uh, do a conversion for. Turns out the lights that I bought, all those Avio lights for the aircraft, the beacon will operate in 24 volt. The uh, TLR Vega landing lights will operate in uh, 24 volt. But the wing tip lights, those are the uh, daylight uh, three and ones that are the they're a tail light, nav light, and a strobe light. Those I need to uh, bring down to 12 volt. Once again, I can pretty easily take and uh, put a converter in that takes the 24 down to uh, 12 volts just for those that small amount of items. I did find out though that the uh, vertical power, the, the VPX box, I had bought the sport box, which is limited to a, a 12 volt system and uh, had to upgrade to the pro which uh, Pacific Coast Avionics was kind enough to uh, let me do a return and exchange. And so I've got the Pro Box on order, which actually gives me a lot more switching capability. The, the Pro Box is a better better box to have. And it really wasn't that big of a, a price increase to, uh, to move up to it and allows me to uh, keep all of this working. Although I lose having that uh, TCW um, backup battery system that I was wanting to uh, to have for the G3X, so I'm going to have to rely on just the fact that the G5 is going to have a battery backup. And uh, I was trying to figure out how do I want to finish this uh, this panel. I uh, read a lot of stuff in the Vans Air Force forums uh, of ways that they prepared this uh, aluminum for painting. A lot of uh, a lot of guys have used the uh, uh, a, a, a 
primer that uh, Napa sells, and Napa sells a, a, a gray primer that's really easy to keep maintained because uh, touch-ups will be easy on something like that. But wanted something maybe a little more durable and a darker color. I didn't like the light gray color as much. Um, so thought of some other ideas, uh, taking and doing a, a powder coat, which uh, a friend across the way here uh, does does do work like that. But then I got the idea of, hey, let's, I love some of these new panels that have the carbon fiber. So uh, I started looking into how to do that. And many of the uh, flyers out there have done with a vinyl wrap that 3M makes. Um, and uh, the, the complaint that I had with that is I'm really up close to this and, uh, and I'm going to be able to tell that it's a, it's a vinyl wrap. Plus the screws, when I put screws in, you can uh, twist that vinyl wrap if you're not careful. You can use washers behind it that'll uh, keep it from slipping. But uh, came across a company that makes a root true carbon fiber thin sheet that you can use as a veneer and put on. Thought, hey, I'll do that. And then some guys on the uh, on the forum said, hey, if you're gonna, if you're gonna buy a carbon fiber and cut it out to your panel, why don't you just buy a real sheet of carbon fiber and do it? So uh, that's what I'm ending up doing. I'm I'm getting a dragon plate uh, sheet that's 24 by 24, so I can cut the panel out. I can cut the uh, little ones for the switches out as well as the surround for the uh, throttle and trim and uh, just have real carbon fiber there it's a matte finish so it's not going to be reflective so I'm not worried about the sunlight coming back on me and I've already got all the dimensions since I've uh, done it in aluminum so it should be a, a relatively easy job to uh, cut that out and get it working and it'll really be a nice accent to go with uh, all these nice pieces I had Maurizio do for me when he was in Italy and uh, so I'll have a, a bit of carbon fiber on the plane, that uh, NACA duct, which you won't see on the bottom of the plane for the cool air intake, is, is carbon fiber as well. But the uh, side uh, ones that are for the uh, cooling air for the engine, those are going to be uh, carbon fiber as well. On this uh, left side panel, where that uh, nut right now is acting as the uh, uh, friction uh, nut for the uh, throttle and trim, I actually want to find a little knurled knob. I preferably like to stay away from plastic. Let's see if I can get something that's aluminum that uh, will fit onto that and uh, and give me a little nicer looking and, and easy to control from the while I'm flying it uh, friction lock on the uh, throttle and, and trim. And then back behind there, there's that little recess. And I was you know kind of curious what that was. The uh, guys on the BD5 site told me that uh, that originally had been planned for the fuel cutoff and. Uh, you could uh, put that there, although mine is uh, up there on the panel with those push pulls. So I've got a perfect idea for that. My uh, heated writing suit that I'm going to utilize in here for cold weather. I'll put my uh, plug there, and yes, I will have to use another converter to take that 24 down to uh, 12 volts. Notice above that, I've got those two holes in the uh, cabin side, and uh, those are from the original... Uh, lever that was to control the uh, manual fuel selector that was for the right and left and fuel shut off that um, the uh, plans build aircraft had. And I really I didn't like that shaft running down the uh, side and, and, and it was pretty chintzy the way you'd move it. Uh, I believe what I'm going to put there though is one of those little ram balls that are for mounting your uh, uh, iPad or putting a, a, a video camera, a verb camera or one of the little uh, cameras for uh, videotaping the uh, flying that I plan on doing. That's a nice location to uh, set it up. And up here on the uh, vertical stabilizer, I have uh, also returned the uh, bent whip antenna that I was going to use. Uh, talking with some of the uh, former builders, people that were involved with Beatty, uh, this is such a small aircraft that uh, that aerial sticking out of the this small airframe actually does produce enough drag to, to affect your uh, top speed, your cruise speed. And uh, they, they said it could be anywhere from 5 to 10 miles an hour that, uh, uh, depending on the type of antenna you put on the aircraft, could affect the BD-5. And one of them happens to have an antenna that fits right here. So the way that works is this uh, forward portion of the vertical stabilizer gets cut away and then a uh, formed fiberglass piece, so it's like a ray dome, gets put on there and uh, ends up with a, they call it a decent comm antenna, so I'll be finding out how well that part works, but very aerodynamic. So uh, 
probably going to change my plan for here. This is going to have to be painted. I'm going to paint that red to match the aircraft. I had already planned on painting the uh, tip there red, but then I'll probably continue the red through just the forward portion here, and I'll probably round this and then find some of that chrome paint just to put there so I end up with a, a smooth surface and don't have to get into painting this part of the aluminum on the fuselage. But I'll believe back here, I'm just going to use this ABS plastic portion just on the forward part where it has that compound curve to it. And then further back, do like a lot of the other builders have done and continue this part here in actual aluminum so I can polish that and have it match the rest of the aircraft. Also be a little sturdier. I don't uh, really don't want this thing coming loose or, or this breaking something and pulling something into my propeller and uh, causing an in-flight emergency. And in my crazy ideas department, remember how outboard here on this wing, I plan on putting an access panel just behind the uh, spar that uh, I'll mount the GMU-11 magnetometer to. So I get it out away from uh, things that will interfere with it. But while I'm at it, while I've got this open, I've got the ability to do something else that I would like to on this aircraft. One of the things I'm uh, not wanting to do is, is use the uh, Garmin Pedo and, and uh, that, that Pedo that Garmin makes does have the ability to run the angle of attack. But uh, I'm not the only aircraft that uh, has a situation where we don't, we would like to try to keep away from using that. Turns out the little Vans RV-12 has the Pedo in the uh, propeller spinner and uh, they also can't utilize the uh, angle of attack like uh, Garmin and as well as Dynan have designed into some of their uh, avionics. And uh, the fix in the RV-12 is to come out onto their wing and at about, if you go from level to about 30 degrees, mount a specific rivet. I forget, I didn't memorize the rivet numbers, but the, I've got it in the uh, Vans paperwork on how to do this. And you drill a hole, you put a rivet into here that's basically angled at 30 degree or 60 degrees from the forward facing. And, uh, and that's how that actually operates is when you are at a higher angle of attack, this starts to get more air into it and the pitot starts to get less air and it, uh, the computer takes and analyzes that and is able to uh, estimate your uh, angle of attack. And so that should be a system that works, works on another aircraft, should work on this aircraft. And uh, it's just a matter of figuring out, can I get my hand up through the little lighting, lightning hole that's in the spar to, uh, to this area? And what it might require doing is drilling a, drilling a couple of holes, one for the, uh, the, the, the opening that's at that angle, but then a couple others to get uh, rivets in and then uh, utilize another piece of aluminum that I'm able to fish up here, hold into place, and then uh, rivet into the uh, skin there and hopefully uh, make that work. So uh, there's, in my, there's my crazy idea department for angle of attack. So uh, my next task right now is uh, going to be pulling this uh, forward canopy off and the glare shield off and uh, setting that up for... Uh, using the uh, drill jig I made to uh, see if this uh, idea of a little ventilation with the BD-5 logo is going to work. I'll, uh, I'll let you know if that works out. I'll show you a video of it.